notes there. I just photocopied what was in your textbook, but you can kind of see why we call them the conic sections. They are cross-sectional areas of cones. Now, the one that isn't shown is probably the most basic one, and that is a circle. We're going to start with circles. Um, if you think of a, a cone, like a sugar cone that you get ice cream in, and you just sliced off the top of it, the shape that you would see is a circle. You slice it straight across. Now, if you slice it at an angle, then you get kind of a warped circle called an ellipse. If you slice it down all the way through the top of the cone, not just through the sides of the cone, but through the top of the cone, you get a parabola. And you know what those are. We spent time with parabolas. And then if you put the two cones point to point and slice down this way, you get what's called a hyperbola. All right, so that's how we're gonna spend our last couple weeks together is talking about the conic sections. So we're starting with circle. Step one, we need to define circle. A circle is a set of points in a plane equidistant from a point in the plane. All right, so it's a set of points in a plane. These are all planar figures. Now, you can have things called spheres, and a sphere is like a circle, only it is three-dimensional, it's like a ball. You can have a bowl, which is like a paraboloid. It's a, a three-dimensional parabola, right? Um, an egg, as, this is kind of a stretch, but an egg is like a three-dimensional ellipse. It's not a circle, it's kind of stretched from here together. So, all these things can exist in three dimensions, but we are talking about them as plane figures. So a circle is a set of points in a plane equidistant from a point in the plane. So if you think about that for a second, here's a point in the plane. If I want all the points that are the same distance away from that, like let's pick a number like six. If I want to be six units away from this, I could go over here, right? There's six. And I could come up here and there's six. Well, if I did that all the way around, do you see how I get a circle? And that's, that point there is not a very good circle, but that point right there, that equidistant from a given point, what do we call that given point? That's called the center of the circle. In this equidistance, in my example it was six, but that distance right there is called the radius. radius. Now there's the good news. For a circle, all you need to know is its center and its radius. That's it. Those are the defining characteristics. Given point is center. Equidistance is the radius. Now for the other curves, there's going to be more stuff you're going to have to find. But for circles, that's it. So we talked about these earlier this year, the basic ones. I don't know if you remember or not. This is the equation of a circle. How do I know it has an x squared plus a y squared? Okay, if you see something like this, that is not a circle, that is a line. That's what lines look like. If you have a squared x and a squared y and they are added together, that's going to be a circle. Anybody know? Can, can anybody tell me the center or the radius of <coughs> this circle right here, number one? Take a wild guess. What? Four? No, but that number does give me the radius. The square root, the radius is two. So the square root of that number is my radius. 
always, okay? So we're gonna get down here to do this one. My radius is going to be the square root of 10. It does not have to be a whole number. It has to be positive, but it can be a fraction or a decimal or a radical or something, okay? Now what about my center? Well, the center of this one is zero, zero. And the reason that it's zero, zero is because we haven't added or subtracted anything. I want you to think back to when we did our quadratics. Now, this is a parabola, but where was the vertex of that? Wasn't the vertex of this at the origin? And then when we started doing this kind of stuff, that's when we started moving it around. Same thing with circles. If you're not adding or subtracting, you are centered at the origin. So where's the center of this one? At the origin, yep, zero, zero. Now, what about this? This guy looks a little bit tougher. First of all, is he still a circle? Yep, because if you boiled it all out, would you have an X squared plus a Y squared? Yep, you'd have other stuff and that's fine, but X squared plus Y squared. Okay, now, where's the center of this one? I heard someone say it, I love you. What say it louder? Negative four, zero. Where is that? Wait, that one, one, negative three. Negative one, three. Negative one, positive three. Remember, it's always the opposite when it's inside the parentheses. When it's inside the parentheses, it's the opposite. So this one is gonna be negative one comma three. And what's my radius? Four. Perfect. Perfect. Now, what about this one? Where's the center of this one? Four, negative one. Positive four and? Negative one. Zero. Zero. Why is it zero? Because there's nothing added or subtracted, right? It's just like this, guys. When there was nothing added or subtracted, this was zero. And this was zero. Well, this one's going to be positive four because it's the opposite of what's in the parentheses, but zero. What's my radius here? Square root of 17. These equations, like this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, these ones that we've done already are in standard form. That's what you want the equation of a circle to look like, because if it looks like this, you know everything you need to know. The center is at negative one comma three, and the radius is four, done. What if it looks like this, though? Is this a circle? Yes. X squared plus Y squared, that's all that matters. The rest of the stuff we don't need. Well, I shouldn't really say that. Um, I gotta be careful. If there were an X, Y term in the problem, which we're never gonna have, but that would change the rules. Um, that's why we're not gonna do it. As long as it's an X squared and a Y squared and just X's and Y's and numbers, we are all good, okay? We gotta make that equation look like that. That's what we need to do. You know how to do this. Any thoughts on that? How are we gonna make that equation look like that one? We've done this before. Oh, they must have had a terrible teacher. It was me, we did it earlier in the year. All right, here's what we do. We're gonna put our X's together and leave a space. So notice there's an X term here and an X term here. We're gonna put them together and leave a space. Then we'll do the same thing with the Y's. So we got a Y squared and a six Y. We're gonna put them together and leave a <coughs> space. Then this five doesn't belong, so I'm just gonna move him to the other side. However many spaces I'm adding over here though, I have to add over here. Does that make sense to you because it's an equation? Whatever I put over here, I have to put over here. 
All right, so here are my X terms. I simply grouped them together and left a blank. Here are my Y terms. I grouped them together and left a blank. And that guy moved to the other side. Now I'm going to complete the square. So to complete the square, remember how that works? We take, not the square root, we take half. We take half of this number and square it. So what's half of four? Two. Two squared is four. four. So I'm going to add four to both sides. Now do the same thing with the y's. What's half of six Three. squared? Oh. That's what you add to both sides. So to complete the square, we want squared quantities. That, so we need to complete the square, we need to make squares. To make squares, you take half of your regular x term and square it. Half of your regular y term and square it. Now, this right here is x minus something squared. Factor that. What does that factor into? Just this part right here. What does that factor into? X. You guys, X squared minus 4X plus 4. How does that factor? X minus 2, X minus 2. They're always going to match, okay? They're always going to match. Because you made a square. This, this one's x minus 2. What's this one? Do the same thing with this one. What's y, that one? Y plus 3. And then all that junk over here added up is 18. Now the directions wanted us to find the center and the radius. Well, now you can. What's the center? Two negative three. Yep. And what's the radius? Square root of eighteen. I always think of it like I got x squared, y squared, r squared. This is r squared. So r is going to be the square root of eighteen, which is something that uh, reduces down to three radical two. equation look like this right here. So what are we going to do first? Look at what we just did. Think about that. What are we going to do? Okay, so we're going to group our x's. x squared plus 10x. And leave a blank because you know you're going to be putting something in there. Alright, and then we'll have y squared minus 8y. And we'll leave a blank. And when we leave those blanks, kids, it's always plus. We're always going to be plusing the blank. All right, now i got to figure these numbers out, all right? Who's got a guess as to this one? 25, Samaya says. Is she right? Yeah. Yep, because we take half of 10, which is 5, squared is 25. Don't forget to put it on the other side. All right, what about this one? 16. Half of 8 is 4. Squared is 16. Now, you don't need to be worried about the negative because since you're squaring, it doesn't matter, right? So don't let that confuse you. Half of 8 is 4. Squared is 16. 
Okay, now we have to write our x quantity squared. That's our goal to get an equation that looks like this. So what's this one going to be? x what? Plus 5. Plus 5. Perfect. What's this one going to be? Y minus 4, Samaya says. Is she right? And what's all that going to equal? Is it 56? You don't have a calculator to help you with your arithmetic. So what's the center? Negative 5, positive 4. And my radius is? Square root of 56, which I'm sure breaks down somehow. Two root 14 is what I got. How about you? All right, well, there's one more. Take a minute and see how far you can get with this guy. You might get a little bit thrown off, but I am confident we'll sort it out. Because our, didn't our first couple problems have just a plain y squared? Now what did we say that meant? Zero. So you don't need to worry about it. If you don't have something to group with it, then it's just going to be zero. So you only need to find one extra number in this problem, because that one's going to be zero. So what goes here? Not 64. 64? Why is it 64? Half of 16 is 8, and 8 squared is 64. What perfect square is this right here? This is what? X plus 8 squared. Perfect. Then I got my plus y squared, and remember, if you don't have anything to group with it, then you don't worry about it. There's nothing to group with that y squared, so, and that equals 72. Where's my center? Negative 8, 0. And my radius is square root 72, which that breaks down to. That's 36 times 2, so 6 radical 2. Done. All right, a couple more, and we'll be done for the day. Number 2, write the equation of the circle. Center at negative 3, 2, and a radius of 7. 
seven. Okay, so you are going to write an equation that looks like this, right? Something squared, all right? So since the center is at negative three, my x parentheses is going to be what? x plus 3 squared, don't forget the square, that's the equation of the circle, plus y minus 2 squared, y minus 2 squared equals, yes, 49. Because that number right there, square rooted, gives you your radius. So if the radius is 7, that has to be 49. All right, do the next one by yourself, see if you can get the next one. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering about pink eye there. Uh, yeah. 